Now that you have changed your color photograph into a black and white photograph using the hue and saturation options, we need to rename your layer, layer zero layer main photo. So to do that, just double click on the word layer and retype um, the name main photo. Now to save that name, you just want to hit enter on your keyboard. Okay. Now, our next step is to create a new adjustment layer and play with the threshold of the photograph to get that solid black color that Andy Warhol is so famous for using in his prints and paintings. Okay, so to do this, you want to click down here on the black and white cookie to create a new fill or adjustment layer. Click on this and click threshold. Okay it will convert your photo into even more of a black and white photo it will flatten everything out so it takes some details out but you can play with this slider to bring some back okay to sharpen the picture as much as you can you want to try and maintain as much detail especially in the face as you possibly can once you get it to a a way that you think you'd like it you just want to hit OK and then I want you to do a file save. This is we're just going to save our work as we go along. Okay? Save your work, hit okay. Let me save that again. I was trying to save it in the wrong spot. Photoshop Okay. All right, you want to make sure you save your file as a Photoshop file and continue to work on it, okay? You just want to save your progress. <clears throat> okay, now our next step is to play with the threshold and just refine it a little bit more. So to do this, you want to make sure you're selected or clicked on the threshold layer, change the threshold layer's opacity to 50% in your layers palette, Okay, then we're going to duplicate our main photo layer. So you click on the photo, drag it all the way down to the bottom of your layers palette, hover over, you want this closed fist to be over your duplicate layer button, and then let go of your mouse, and you'll get a new main photo layer. <clears throat> then, on this copy layer, we're going to use a tool that you haven't used yet. It's the Dodge and Burn tools. They're two separate tools which are located right here. This one that looks like a pointing finger, that's the smudge tool. Right below that is the Dodge tool which looks like a lollipop and the Burn tool which looks like someone pinching you. Okay? The Burn tool gives some more detail. Or takes a little bit more detail away. The Dodge tool will give us back that detail okay so you just want to click around get as much detail in here as you possibly can go back back and forth between your dodge tool and your burn tool I'm gonna bring a little bit more of my friend's face in maybe a little bit of her eyebrow okay and bring some of this hair back you notice I'm getting some dark spots in my image. That's the highlights that I'm pulling out using these two tools. All right, we're going to find my hat a little bit. All right, this looks pretty good. All right, now that's perfect. That's that's what I want. That looks good to me. Okay. Once you're done playing with your threshold and your dodge and burn tools, bring the opacity of your threshold layer back to 100%. Okay. And do a file save again to save your progress. So control S will save your progress. Then you need to select the threshold layer. So make sure your threshold layer is clicked. And you need to go to select color range and click on the black of your image. 
By clicking on the black part of your image, you see it is now selected in your color range area. What this does is selects all of the colors that are that exact same color that you clicked on. And since we only have pure black and pure white, it's going to select everything in this picture that, you, that it thinks is the same color. So everything that's black is going to have dancing ants around it when I hit OK. So make sure you click on black and then click OK. And if you notice, now we have our dancing ants. OK? Once you get your dancing ants, excuse me, I want you to click on the new layer, create new layer button, okay? Make sure that that new layer is at the very, 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 very top of your layers palette. If it is not the first layer, this will not work. What I'm about to show you, this next step will not work if it's not at the top of your layers palette. Click on the Select the color from your swatches palette that you want to use. If you cannot see the swatches palette, if it's not up, go to Window and make sure there is a check mark next to the word Swatches and it will pop up. Okay? First color I want to use is green. So I'm going to click on the color green. If you notice, I clicked that green and it shows up in my foreground swatch area down in my toolbar. Now that we have our ants, we want to do a select inverse. If we fill the color of the ants that we're, that we're dancing, we would paint over the black area of our image. We don't want to paint over the black, we want to keep the black, okay? We want to get rid of the white areas. So you do a select inverse. Then, grab your paint bucket. If you can't see your paint bucket in your toolbar, it's underneath the gradient tool. So you might see something that looks like this icon. Click and hold your mouse down and select your paint bucket. Then just click somewhere on the white with your paint bucket and it will fill that area. Okay, it will fill everything that is selected. If you don't want to do it that way, you can do an edit fill. Make sure that the foreground option is selected underneath contents. So right here, make sure it's foreground and hit OK and it fills just the same way. Once you fill it, I want you to do a file save. OK. And the next tutorial I will show you is how to merge all of these layers together and to begin making the tiling for your Andy Warhol style pop art.